We'll read it together in just a moment. I've entitled this message, Leaves of Three, Let Them Be. We'll find just in this particular message this morning, just the first couple of verses, some things of threes that we need to avoid this morning. And if you would read with me in Psalm chapter number one, if you don't have a Bible, if someone by you can share, or read Psalm chapter one, beginning verse one. Read this with me if you would, please. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Lord, I thank you for your word and for this time this morning. I ask for your help, your power this morning. Lord, and Lord, I need you to speak to hearts today. We look at your word, Lord, you've promised that your word would not return void, but Lord, I ask that we would respond the right way to it that we would not become hardened to it, but that we would be soft and tender to your, to your leading, and your spirit, and your word will touch our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Psalm chapter 1. Tree planted by the rivers of water. There are pictures out there with that particular phrase under it that you can hang in your house. A quoted and, and, and um, misquoted, preached on. So we look at this particular psalm, there's a, a few things I want us to look at, but in particular this morning I want to look at basically just the first verse and the phrase in the second verse. We'll hit this psalm again, obviously, in the weeks to follow. But the title of the message is Leaves of Three, Let Them Be. You'll notice in, in uh, verse number one of Psalms, there's some threes we're going to see this morning. There's the ungodly, there's the sinner, and there is the scorner, the scornful. There are things to avoid characteristics, the counsel, and the way, and the seat. And there are things not to do, walk, stand, nor sit. And I'd say this, leaves of three, let them be. You say, Brother Howells, this is a personal illustration. Well, it absolutely is. We came back from Man Up Camp just a week or so ago. I have a couple experiences at Man Up Camp in my life, and one of them is with Poison Ivy. I am, or have been, extremely allergic to poison ivy throughout my life. I got it in college, and I got it in just a terrible, terrible fashion. So much so that it began to spread over my entire body. They said it was in my bloodstream. I don't know if that's possible or not, but they said that. I got shots, took the steroids, and, and about two weeks without a commission to college. So since that time, I've been pretty, pretty sensitive to poison ivy. A few years back, I believe it was the first or second time I went to Man Up Camp, um, Brother Clark was at Man Up Camp with me. It was during that time that I was doing something, and he said, oh, look down, you're standing in a bed of poison ivy. I looked down, and sure enough, there I was standing in poison ivy. I jumped up and ran down to the, to, the, to the water. I remember him laughing at me about this. He does not remember laughing at me, but I remember clearly him mocking me as I scrubbed down, trying to get the, the Eurochelle oil um, off, off my skin. And, and oddly enough, when I came back that time from, from a few years back from Man Up Camp, I did not get any poison ivy. Yet... That Sunday morning, Brother Clark said, Hey, Brother Howell, look, lift up his pant leg, and his leg had poison ivy all over it. <laughs> the Lord knows them that are his. <laughs> Fast forward to this past year. We're there at Man Up Camp, and my two boys are with me. I begin to run through the woods. They're having a grand old time. I bought little radios. They're running and with their friends, and uh, oh no, they're with me, and they're walking through the woods safely on the clearly marked paths, honey. Clearly marked paths carefully lit by the lights that we laid out earlier, right, Brother Lateski, for the children, and put the rubber matting from shredded tires everywhere they walked, and if they fell, we had an air mattress for them to catch them. Nothing but safety at Man Up Camp. They were meandering through the woods, <laughs> and I, I said to Johnny, Johnny, watch out for poison ivy. Famous last words from a father. Johnny said, okay, Dad, I'm not walking in it. I said, okay, son, and he promptly ran on his way, not to be bothered by the caution of a father, 
not to be, not to be waylaid by the instruction of an elder in his life. And no problem. I, I'm in the woods, Dad. There can't be poison ivy around. There's no issue. And, and I'm sure he walked through it. At that time, I was sure. Now I'm convinced of it. About three days ago, he said, Dad, is this poison ivy in my leg? I said, yes, it is, son. I said, Johnny, I don't feel badly for you. <laughs> I warned you. Spoken like only a father can say, right, Dr. Martin? Like only a father can say. It has begun to spread, and he has quite a, uh, quite a case of poison ivy. He said, Brother Howe, what does that have to do with Psalm chapter 1? Oh, everything. Everything. Because the, the psalmist writes, the very first word says, blessed, happy. Happy is who? The man who now he then begins to give some caution, some warning. He says, listen, I want to warn you. I want to caution you about something, and I want to tell you that you can have a blessed life. You can have a happy life, a life that is filled with pleasing God. It is a warning to those who would live a life without blessing and happiness, a, a reproof to those who desire to live a life free of turmoil and strife. It says, blessed is a man that avoids these things. Leaves of three, let them be. You see, right now, and I've experienced this before, Johnny has no blessing in his life right now. We're driving home yesterday, and he says, Daddy, my body just itches. Has anyone ever experienced that before? You know what that's like, and you can't itch it, but you just, oh. And at times in our life, we feel the exact same way. We feel like in our life, in a, in a physical sense, boy, I just my life is, in, is just uncomfortable. And the psalmist here in Psalm number one, verse number one, begins to lay out a way, a way of some things to avoid so that we can have a life of blessing and happiness for the Lord. Does that mean that your power will never go out? Of course not. Does that mean you'll never have a flat tire? Of course not. But it means your life will be structured in a way that pleases the Lord and you will be, like verse number three says, a tree planted by the rivers of water. You see, I did not bring the plant illustration to, the, to, to Psalm number one. Psalm number one introduced the plant illustration. He said, you won't be like poison ivy, you'll be like a tree. You won't be like chaff, you'll be like a tree. We'll look at that in a few weeks from now. But I want some things, I want us to look at some things that the Bible says we ought to let be in our life. The first thing I see are three characters to avoid. There are three attributes, three descriptions, three stages, three mindsets to be wary of. Not to reject, but to be cautious that we are to be influenced only by God and the things of God. The three characters I see in the, in the passage here. The first one I see is the ungodly. The ungodly. You know what it means is a life of someone who lives without God. You say, what does that mean, Brother Howell? Well, in, in the Hebrew, this particular idea, it gives it the connotation of not someone who is like the sinner or the scornful, but someone who could be a good person, someone who could be a moral person, someone who could be a helpful person, but they live their life apart from God. He says, I'll give you a warning. Be cautious of having, being influenced by those who live their life apart from God. I remember a man that I used to know. He was a good man. He was a moral man. He was a generous man. He gave some very, very expensive, generous gifts. But if you talked about the Lord, he didn't want to talk about it. He was a faithful man, faithful to his spouse. He was moral. He was generous. He was kind. He was everything that we would want in a man, but he was ungodly. And the Bible says there is a warning to watch out for someone who is ungodly. If we're not careful, we'll begin to, to, to say, listen, but that person, they're so good, they're so helpful, and that's wonderful. They have some good characteristics, but be careful because they are, as the Bible says, ungodly, living a life apart from or without God in it. He's not a part of it. They make decisions without God. They make choices without God. And they may be wise financial choices, but they're not godly choices. And the Bible says, be careful of those who are ungodly. But then I see the sinner. The sinner not only is ungodly, but it's like step number two. Now someone who not only doesn't do good, but does some evil. We know that that word sin there means to miss the mark. They've added transgression to a life without God. They don't care much about the consequences that come into their life. They're living a life apart from God and, and now enjoying some of what the Bible says are pleasures of sin for a season. 
Maybe they like to party on the weekends. Someone who is ungodly but now become a sinner. Now they're not living morally. I know some good people who don't, who don't party. They're not saved, but, but for health reasons they don't. This particular sinner says, listen, I don't care about that. I'm going to do what I want to do. That's the sinner. The Bible says, be cautious of that. Ah, this person makes choices for themselves and themselves alone. This person makes choices and they don't quite care about what will happen when it's all said and done because they'll figure it out. They're sinful people. And the Bible says, be careful about that. And then I look at and I see in the passage, in the last word of verse number one, the scornful. Well, this one is easier to identify. This person has no religion lives in open breach in opposition to what God says and God's laws. They want to change and they want to redefine God's laws. And we live in a current culture of scornful people. They said, I don't care what the Bible says. I don't care what God says. I don't care that God created things this way. We want it to be this way and no one can tell us otherwise. Scornful. The Bible warns us against scornful people. You know what I find sometimes that Christians tend to, if they're not careful, follow scornful people. Well, they, they're politically, they're, they're the same place we are, Pastor Howell, but they're scorners. They're, and the Bible gives a warning about that. It says, be careful who influences you. Be careful what influences you. Leaves of three, let them be. I see not only three characters, I see three characteristics. The Bible says this, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So it equates this with the ungodly, the, the advice, avoid the counsel of the ungodly. There's a lot of counsel out there that is just apart from God. There's counsel about how to raise your children apart from God's way. And will it work? No. Things will only work as long as they're in line with what God says. And they'll, th they'll say things like, listen, d don't hurt your child's psyche. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't damage, don't damage them, their personality. You you've been at Walmart before. You've seen the child who wants the, the candy bar and, the, and the, the parent says no, right? And they throw a tantrum. I want to damage that. <laughs> but adults do it too. We're heading out to New Jersey last week and I'm driving down the road, I'm... Uh, on 23, right near Ann Arbor. And uh, my wife's talking, I said, honey, just a second, there's two, there's two cars, there's two vehicles battling it out behind me. And there was a lady in one vehicle and a man in a, in a work truck, and, and the lady wouldn't let the man merge. Now I watched this in my, rear, in, my, in my side mirror while I'm driving. I said, oh, look at that, she didn't, she didn't let him merge. I don't know why she didn't, maybe she wasn't paying attention or whatnot. Then I saw him swerve around and cut her off. We're going 75, 78 miles an hour on the highway. She slams on her brake and she switches to the middle lane. I'm in the fast lane. And uh, he cuts right over in front of her again. Now they're going back and forth on the highway. You know what they're having? A temper tantrum with each other. And I'm like, oh man. And, and so I said, I, and we got out of there. I went faster. I said, this is going to be a problem. I don't know what happened to him. But she switched lanes, he switched lanes. He switched, he got in front of her, slammed down his brakes. They, and then she whips her, I mean, unbelievable. You know what? I don't want that kind of attitude in my kids' lives. All right, that's not the way you're supposed to react in life, is it? All right, you're supposed to esteem others better than yourselves. We have to avoid the counsel. There's counsel on your marriage, there's counsel on your family, there's counsel on your finances. Be careful, be careful you're not grabbing counsel from the ungodly. The Bible will talk about finances. The Bible talks about family. The Bible will talk about your faith. Make sure you get your counsel, your influence from God's Word. From God's Word. Just avoid the counsel. But it goes on. It says, Nor standeth in the way of sinners. He said, it says, uh, uh, Not in the counsel of the ungodly, but it standeth in the way of sinners. That word way means a custom, an action or a way of life. It's interesting that, that this passage begins to have this progression. For first, there's a, there's a counsel that you're listening to, and then there's a, there's a custom, there's an action, there's a, a way of living. All of a sudden, you look and say, well, that doesn't seem that bad. Hey, look at them. They're living that way, and, and, and their lives seem to be wonderful, and, and they've got more, more things than I have. They've got, it looks like a happiness. They're laughing and smiling. And you know what? It can't be that bad to live that way. That looks like what they're doing is a lot of fun. Be careful. 
Be careful. It's the way of a sinner, and the Bible says be careful about that. It does not end up, the Bible says ultimately will not prosper. We will not be blessed. We will not be happiness. Avoid the custom, the way of life. It seems like our churches are becoming less spiritual rather than more spiritual. It seems like our families are becoming more carnal, more worldly rather than more spiritual. There's less time in God's Word rather than more time in God's Word. There's less time in church rather than more time in church. And those things are not the way of godliness. They're the way, a custom of sinful people. In this day and age, we should not be canceling services. We should be adding services. I love what one of my friends did recently. They added a 1 o'clock Wednesday service. They did this for guys who are in second shift, and I thought about it. Maybe we'll do it sometime. They did it not as a convenient, but as a way that if they didn't have a 1 o'clock service, a lot of men in this church could not go to prayer meeting on Wednesdays. I like that. A whole lot more churches are canceling Sunday night services, and he's like, I'm adding a Wednesday afternoon service. I like that. Looks like what they're doing is great, and we add, add on. Looks like I'd, I'd rather be on the beach in a boat on Sunday than in church. Be careful. Be careful. The way of a sinner. Looks like the way they're interacting with those people looks like fun. Be careful. The way of a sinner. The Bible says avoid the custom of sinners. And then it says be careful of the seat of the scornful. That seat means a boat or dwelling. I, I word it this way, avoid the cave. I could have chose condo, but I chose cave. Because a scornful is saying there's a dwelling there who I follow. I'm reminded of this, of a, of a display at a trade show. Remember, I was in college, and I went to one of these places, and, and they had these free T-shirts just to sign up. You're at college. You don't think about long-term consequences of signing up for things, right? And I got enough free T-shirts to... Uh, to, to fill a whole wardrobe of free t-shirts and enough spam emails and offers the rest of my life to last me the next 30 years. But you go to one of these tread shows and you see someone selling things or the kiosk at a mall and, and what do they do? They're trying to gain, gain a following, are they not? Hey, try this product. Hey, try this thing. This will revolutionize your life. You could not live before this particular product, this particular uh, thing we're offering. And it says here the scornful is looking for proselytes. The scornful is trying to get people to dwell with them, to live a life apart from God the way they do. The Bible says to avoid that. Not only do I see three characters and three characteristics, but I three, see three courses. The Bible uses these words, walk, stand, and sit. Walk, stand, and sit. The progression I see of what happens when you don't check your influences. The walk, I would say this way, is paying attention. This is what happens. First of all, we begin to pay attention at the ungodly. Oh, catches our eye. That's interesting. That, that, that's, that's unique. I, I, uh, I, I might want inf more information about that. The Bible says, be careful that what catches your eye is found right here in His Word. You pay attention. What happens next, though, is a pausing. You stop and listen. Oh, talk to me. Give me some more. And after you, you pay attention and pause, then before long you're participating, sitting in the seat of the scornful. See, there's leaves of three. Let them be. Monday this morning, go, they'll give you three comments about these, this passage. Because the Bible says that I don't have to be in this life. I don't have to have that. I can have blessing. Blessed is a man that does this. What does that blessing look like? It looks like a tree planted by the rivers of water. It looks like a leaf that does not wither. It looks like whatsoever he does shall prosper. So let me give you three comments. First of all, I must be careful where I seek counsel and advice from. I must be careful where I seek counsel and advice from. Well, my neighbor told me, are they saved? Are they godly? Are they living for God? Be careful where you seek counsel. Well, I read. Really? You know there's a lot on the internet that's not true? They call it fake news. One of my favorite phrases, fake news. You know, if you want to, you can find crazy conspiracy theories on the internet. And this last week, we, what was it, the, the landing of, of the, uh, on the moon, Right? All faked, right? All faked. 
We never really went on the moon. It was a conspiracy by the government to do that. Be careful where you, you seek counsel and advice from. There would have been a time that we would have been more applied to this toward our, toward our co-workers, but now with smartphones, be careful what you pull up on your phone. Be careful what you Google. Listen, we've had it in our house before. Someone gets sick, and what do you do? You Google the sickness, right? What do you find? I stubbed my toe. First four results. Stubbed my toe, and I was dead in three hours. Oh, man, life is over. Let me put my house in order. Right? You never find the, the good things. You find the crazy things. <laughs> I have found some money. All I need is 10000 of your dollars, and I can re release you untold riches to your house for you, right? Be careful. And people fall for these scams all the time. Be careful where you seek counsel and advice from. Oh, there's some good help out there. How do I, you know, my wife and I had a problem when we had some ink in a dryer the other day. So she Googled, how do you remove ink from a dryer? And they said a magic eraser and nail polish remover. And it worked. It worked. Who knew? I would have used gasoline and a blowtorch, but magic eraser and a, <laughs> you know. No more ink and dryer, I promise you. But be careful. Because if we're not careful, what will happen is we'll spend five minutes in God's Word and five hours on Facebook. Where's our counsel and advice coming from? We'll spend five minutes praying and 55 minutes commenting. Where's our advice and counsel coming from? Be careful where you seek your counsel and advice. If you want a life of blessing, the Bible says, hey, these leaves of three, let them be the ungodly, the sinful, and the scornful. Second comment is this. Notice that the influence I choose have a lasting impact on my life. In the Reformers Unanimous, there's this phrase, this, this principle, those who do not love the Lord will not help me serve the Lord. You realize that the influences I choose will affect me past today? You see, where this psalm goes, it goes to a tree, to a prosperous life, and then ultimately for the sinful people, that they'll not stand in the congregation of the righteous. All the results from verses 2 through 6 are long-term results. They're not instant results. It's not like I cut my finger, I bleed, and put a Band-Aid on. This passage is dealing with a long-term, a whole life effect. And so when it begins in verse number 1, it's saying, listen, be careful, because what you choose to influence you will affect you far past you can imagine. The influence I choose have a lasting impact on my life. It's a story told by Lee Strobel. That time he was a writer for the Chicago Tribune. He received a phone call from a father desperate to find his missing 19-year-old daughter. His father said this, she was a good girl, never in any trouble, and so innocent, and now she's gone. The police weren't helping, so would he alert the city to her disappearance? Well, moved by his anguish, Strobel writes, he began to pursue the story. But when he interviewed his daughter's friends and the police, a much different story emerged. Tragically, it turned out that this 19-year-old innocent girl was actually a drug addict, girlfriend of a gang member, and a part-time prostitute. When the police found her body a few days later, they determined she had been a victim of heroin overdose. Lee writes, I didn't have the heart to tell the father what he'd learned about her lifestyle. He sincerely believed that she was an innocent child, but he was sincerely wrong. He had seen what he wanted to see, but he overlooked the obvious clues that pointed in another direction. When I read that, I thought about what we do with our life. We want the blessing that Psalm chapter 1, verse 1 mentions, blessed is the man. But if we're not careful, we will miss all the signs, all the clues. We'll say, I want the blessing, but, but I want to live this way. It doesn't happen. He thought his daughter was this innocent girl. Unfortunately, she had made some terrible choices in life. If we're not careful, we'll end up in a place that we don't want to end up, and we'll say, how did we even get here? Because we played with the leaves of three. You see, the influence I choose have a lasting impact on my life. And lastly, blessing follows those who follow God. Blessings follow those who who follow God. You want blessing in your life? Follow God. 
We are not a prosperity gospel church. Those churches say, listen, if you give $1 or $100, God will send you 1000 or a $1 million, and I wish he would. If, I wish he would. I'd do it all day long. God doesn't promise that. He does promise to take care of his own, though. He promises never to leave us nor forsake us. And I tell you what, the happiest people I know are Christians. They're Christians. Even in the face of tragedy, and I don't just mean this deep-seated joy, oh, I'm so happy. I mean genuinely happy, joyful, smiling people. What are you smiling about? I have Christ in my heart. You see, blessing follows those who follow God. Maybe you've been saved two days or two weeks or two years or 20 years. You get to set your course. You set your course by the choices you make. You don't get to choose the consequences. Those are set by God himself. You follow God, his word, as the Bible says, delight in the law of the Lord. You delight in that and follow him. You'll be like the tree. You'll be the blessed man. If you follow the ungodliness counsel or the way of the sinner or participate with the scornful, you won't prosper. You will wither. And then you'll wonder what happened. And all along, found in Psalm chapter 1. Lord, I thank you for your word. Thank you that we 